everybody. Uh, Tim here from Lessons on the Web, and of course we are doing uh, rhythm practice number 12, I believe, and today we are talking about dotted quarter notes. So this is a review since I've talked about dotted quarter notes in a few of my videos before, but I certainly haven't talked about them uh, at least any time recently. So uh, we're just going to review them again as kind of a short lesson tonight, and then uh, I'll take any questions uh, for the live stream portion. So anyway, let's get started. So we're just going to be in 4-4 today. What does 4-4 tell us? It tells us there are four beats in a measure, and quarter note gets one beat. So if you can think about the bottom number as being a fraction, one over four, that's a quarter. If it ends in an eight, that means that the eighth note is going to get one beat. So we're going to have a rhythm lesson on that, of course, uh, coming up. And there's other things. So, so any one that ends in eight is usually called a compound time signature. A compound time signature can be counted in two different ways, but uh, this t for today we are doing what's called a simple time signature, which is like 4-4, four, 3-4, four, four, and 2-4, so just a little bit of extra knowledge there for you. So let's take a look. So we have a dotted quarter, eighth, quarter, quarter, and it worked. All right, perfect. So the first question I have for everybody is, uh, do I have the correct amount of beats in this measure? I'll give it uh, just a minute. So Rich, if you're there, do I have the correct amount of beats per this measure? Yes, of course, Rich is a master by now. So we have one, and then how many beats is this dotted quarter gonna take up? Well, it's gonna take up one, and, well, let's see, it's kind of hard to visualize, right? Especially if you're doing this for the first time. So you just ask yourself, how many halves in one and a half? And it's three, right? So whenever you're breaking the notes into one and two and three and, you're basically breaking them into halves, where the number represents one half of the beat and and represents the other. So we have one half here, we have another half here, we have our third half right there. And then and would take place right there on the next eighth note. So it's going to take up one and two, and then you have, uh, oh yeah, one and two, and then and is on the eighth note, and then you have three, four, just like that. So uh, I'm gonna count this one now. One and two and three, four. So now it's great having the um, keys and everything uh, work correctly. So I noticed uh, maybe another person or two has joined us. Hello, and feel free to share in the comments. Great to have you. Uh, all right, we're going to do another rhythm. Now here, we're going to incorporate some of the, uh, the things we talked about from the last lesson. So we're going to have a triplet. And these are eighth note triplets. Eventually, I will make uh, lessons on quarter note triplets as some of my awesome students have suggested. But today we're just doing eighth notes since we talked about those before. And then let's see. Okay, so do we have the correct amount of beats for this measure or do we need uh, any less beats or any more beats? So just let me know, I'll give you a minute to think about it and just let me know in the comments uh, you know, what you think. So this one is actually uh, incorrect for this one since we have, right? So if you remember triplet, it's going to be counted as one triplet. And then you have the two, beat two right there. And then how many halves is that dotted quarter note going to take up? Well, it's going to take up three halves of a beat, right? It's going to take up there. And then we have and here. So we actually need one more beat. So we're just going to either, you know, add a quarter note to make things uh, really easy and then of course that shifts all of the counting off so you have one triplet two and three and then you have and and then four right there okay here we go so we're going to add in some sixteenths now See, it doesn't work. All 
Okay, so just as a review from last time, uh, how am I going to count this beat, how beat one? Well, we're going to count it as one, E, and then you have and, uh, and then you have two, and then this half note here is beats three and four. Not three and four, three including four. So you're go actually going to count this as one E and a two, three, four. Now you have to be careful that when you go from the one E and a two, you might in your head want to be counting E and a. So you want to be counting one E and a, two E and a. What that will ensure, even though you're not counting, you're playing for each 16th note, it'll ensure that you're going in from the 16th notes and the quarter notes with the proper speed. And you might want to count that for the other two beats as well. So you want to go one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So even though I counted out each subdivision uh, of the beat, I uh, pl played the correct rhythm with it. And that's just a little tip to give you um, if you want to make sure you're going from one rhythmic pattern to the other and maintaining a consistent tempo throughout, since it's very common uh, to change tempos. Okay, here we go. So now we're going to do, let's do this. Now we're going to change it up. Okay, now we have like a mixed rhythm in here with 16th notes. So let's see if we can figure this out. Let's take a look. So we have our first eighth note here. That's beat one, obviously, right? And then you have the next one, which is and two and, since that has to take up three halves of a beat, right? Since it's pretty tricky to uh, kind of visualize that if you start with an eighth note. So you have one and then and two and is that dotted quarter. Now, which beats does that triplet take up? While you're thinking about it, I'm going to change something because I can't quite see what Rich is saying. <clears throat> okay, Rich asks, is it better to always subdivide? Or is that when you're just beginning? Um, if you are really good at counting um, just in the beginning, if you're like me where you, you, know, you learn it over time, um, it can never hurt to go back and double check a lot of measures. Like if I am learning like a piano sonata and, um, and I get to a certain part and I just kind of learn it without subdividing it first, uh, mo not most of the time, but sometimes if I go back and I double check and subdivide, I will find even with years of experience that I am actually, my brain is just, I don't know, interpreting things incorrectly. So it's always important to go back and double check, even if you're good at it. But it is especially good to do in the beginning. And if you're like a rhythm expert, then you probably won't have to use them as much. And you don't, don't have to really subdivide as much uh, with a metronome since that's keeping the beat for you. So you know, you know when you're going to hit that next note. But great question. Andre's here. Sup, Andre. Glad to have you as a part of the live stream. So thanks uh, for showing up and great to see you. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Feel free to share if uh, you want uh, any of your music background or, you know, if you've been a uh, longtime member of the channel. But if not, that's totally cool. So we can sit back and uh, learn together. So here we're back to the example. We have one and then and two and remember was that dotted quarter note. And then I asked before, what does this beat three take of this triplet? Well, it takes up all of beat three. Since if you remember, the purpose of an eighth note triplet is to take up one single beat. And now what do I do with this last one? We haven't really seen a rhythm like this before. What is this rhythm? Well, it's an eighth note connected to two sixteenth notes. So it's really like the equal value of an eighth note and an eighth note, right? Since two eighth notes equal a sixteenth note. So 
we're going to have four. And just like when we had eighth notes, right? You see how, uh, let me circle them differently now. See how these two are eighth notes? Well, and is going to be right here. So you're going to have four and, and then you have to split the second half of the beat into another half to make uh, room for that 16th note. So you have and a. Uh. So here's how we are going to count uh, this measure. So you go one and two and three triplet four and a. Uh. Let me try again. One and two and three triplet four and a. Uh. Just like that. Oh, you're welcome, Rich. Great question, uh, as always. And uh, feel free to let me know any other questions anybody else has. You know, if you have questions as we go along, please let me know because it does provide a lot of like context and a lot of good discussion. Uh, you know, these questions a lot of times, so long as they're relevant, of course. Okay, here we go. So. Uh, we did that before. Okay, I have a question for everybody. Do we have the correct amount of beats in this measure that we have? And the answer is, I'll give you a second actually. The answer is actually no, we do not have the correct amount of beats. So let's chart them out together. You know, get our pen here. You got and, not and. Sometimes when I see a, an eighth note, I immediately think and. But just remember that the first beat of the measure, unless it's a pickup measure, has to be beat one. So one. Then here we have, what beats is this going to take up? It's going to take up and. But is that all? No, it's going to take up and two. And you have and. Now how am I going to count this? This is actually different than before. This is actually, see how these first two are sixteenths? Well, because they're sixteenths, think about if you have four sixteenths right in a row, right? You would count three e anda. So in this case, it's actually three e, and then the anda is actually taken up by the uh, eighth note, sorry, because that takes up two sixteenth notes. So you're going to count this uh, rhythm like this: one and two and three e anda. So once again, one and two and three e anda, just like that, or without counting. Just like that. Now we don't have enough uh, beats in the measure, so I got to add a quarter note. I actually forgot about that part earlier, and that shifts all the beats out. So this then would be beat four, uh, but I'm not going to rewrite um, all of that since it would take up too much time. Uh, how about So Rich, were you saying uh, something I said was incorrect or that we had an incorrect amount of beats and that I had forgotten about it because I realized that right at the end. Uh, one and two and three E and uh, four. Yeah, so that's, that, that would be right then. Um, all right, let's take a look. We have, here's one we haven't seen in a while. Yeah, that blue one. <laughs> here's one. Okay, how am I going to count this rhythm? So how many beats is this dotted half note going to take up? Sorry, Rich, I apologize. There's actually like a little bit of a delay. And then I think there's also a little bit of a delay uh, back when I see your message. Um, so I should give you more time uh, in, you know, assuming that there is a delay. Uh, I also want to keep the lesson moving. So some of my questions are rhetorical, but usually if I pause and give you a minute to think about it, then uh, obviously type them in. So how many of the, the I will give you this one, uh, how many of the beats does this dotted half note take up? Yeah, three, Thank uh, Andre has answered as well. Thank you for stepping up to the plate as well. Uh, and great to see Rich has responded. I gave him enough time this time. So one, two, three, and it's always great to hear feedback, by the way, so long as it's like constructive, um, because sometimes I just don't know what's happening on your end. I know what's happening on my end. So if anything ever starts messing up real bad, uh, let us know. So we have four, and then, 
just like before, what are the last two sixteenths going to take up? So I will give you time for this because this is uh, pretty important. Okay, I'm going to give it a few more seconds. So the question was, the last two sixteenths, what beats are they going to take up? So it has to be part of beat four in some way. Yeah, and uh, exactly. Rich is a pro uh, who, because he has attended many of these, but he, I'm sure he knows a bit about rhythm already. All right. Okay, I'm going to do like one or two more and then we're going to call it a day. Like I said, shorter live stream. One thing I'm realizing is not, well, it probably help if I showed up on time today. Sorry about that, by the way. I just got hung up on uh, some important things. I had some people over, uh, some family over actually, so that's very important to me. Uh, but I did try to make it in uh, anyway. Um, but uh, here we are. So let us do one or two more for our lesson today. And then we're going to meet again on Friday. I will be on time, at least as far as I know, unless something crazy happens. Uh, Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern S yeah, Eastern Standard Time. I can't believe I couldn't remember that. Uh, it's getting to the end of the day again, obviously. Uh, but here we go. So we're going to do one or two more. Let's see. Sure, that works good. Well... Okay, so question, now that we have a little bit more complicated of a rhythm, uh, how many, or do we have the correct amount of beats per this measure? I'll give uh, everybody enough time to answer, so just a yes or no. Yes, so Rich has gotten the answer. So the answer is yes, since we have one triplet, two and three and four E and a, four E and a. One triplet, two and three and four E and a. I think what I'm going to start doing is uh, maybe in a couple of lessons start. I actually need to uh, get some uh, new uh, batteries in my metronome. I uh, actually could probably get it on the surface here. Uh, we'll probably start using the metronome along with the rhythm just to kind of show you how to practice with the metronome and you know how you can improve your rhythm that way. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we have one triplet, two and three and, and then this is four E and, uh, so what you probably wanna start practicing doing uh, to get a little extra practice doing this and counting out the beats, is go through some of your songs that you've learned already and just, you know, go through some really uh, difficult rhythm pattern that you may have struggled with before and see if you can chart out where in the measure uh, each of those hits since you know there are some difficult ones one thing I, I realize we haven't been doing a lot of is rests so we'll start putting in some rests uh, there as well okay so uh, I'm gonna do one more example before I do that I want to know if anybody out there has any questions before moving forward I know we have uh, some new people here I know we have Andre uh, Andre, thank you for coming, and I uh, hope to see you in more of these, but of course you don't have to, but it is great to see uh, some new names in here every now and again, and some reoccurring names, uh, of course, is always great as well. And then just remember, before I do this last example, I want everybody to know, in case you just dropped in uh, for whatever reason, uh, that the next meeting, or at least most of the meetings, take place on Friday and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and the next meeting, from uh, the time you're watching this one, will be Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, of course, just letting you know when they are. And if you ever want to see the schedule, lessonsontheweb.com slash community. Uh, and then if you scroll down, you can find the official schedule where like, you know, 
most like 95 percent of the time i will be there if it's on the schedule just keep in mind that i do take a uh, a week off uh here or there a sunday or a friday here uh but anyway we'll get uh, right on to it but let me check the uh, chat to see how everybody's doing Okay, so I'm um, just going to give it another minute because I want to give everybody time to respond. So it's just if you have any questions before we continue or if you're new here and you want to say hello, you know, feel free and I'd love to uh, hear from you. But if not, that's totally cool. We'll get on with the next example. So let me just set it up. I'll just, uh, well, I'll give you a couple minutes or a minute or so. Okay, here's our final one today. So let me check the chat really quick. All right, Andre is still here. Great to see you again, Andre. Or still here, I guess. I guess you haven't left us. Uh, do you teach piano over Skype? Um, not officially, only because my schedule is a little bit limited, but I have done it for uh, some students who uh, have, I don't know, have gotten in contact with me uh, and I have, you know, just kind of taken them on in my students. So I don't have it posted on the website officially. Uh, it is something I am working uh, to work into the website. But if anybody here is interested, I will give you a Skype lesson uh, if you want it. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more expensive, uh, about $20 a half hour, um, $40 an hour. Uh, but that's up to you. Or if you wanted to do a 15 minute lesson, I would do that um, for uh, a lower cost at, uh, you know, I could do like 15 minutes for uh, 10 bucks if you know you're a little bit limited and you just need a couple of tips here or there, uh, feel free to do that. But I'm kind of working everything in. I might even do group Skype lessons that are like a reduced cost, uh, but I don't know. There's so many things to do. I, I need to make the first next few courses and then I'll see what I can add in, Rich. But uh, yeah, I, I will teach uh, somebody Skype if they uh, ask me, but it's not an official uh, thing that I do yet. All right, Rich, yeah, definitely. Anytime you're ready or anytime you wanna let me know, just let me know and uh, you know we'll set it up. And you know, you don't. there's no long-term commitment to this. So like if you wanted to just test it out for a few lessons or a lesson, you know, just to see what it's like. It's a lot like this, but only just between me and you. And then, of course, I'd be able to hear your voice and your playing as well and give you some feedback. So, uh, but, the, but the general video format from what you're seeing from me would be the same, where I have every capability I have here. I have the light-up keys, I have the keyboard, and uh, the thing up top. Okay, so we're going to do this last example. If you have any questions or comments from what we talked about before, just let them in the comments. Leave them in the comments, and uh, I will see them and uh, respond. So here we go. Here's our last rhythm for today. I added in a rest since I feel like the rests have been neglected. So uh, do we have the correct amount of beats for this measure? Well, I'll kind of answer it for you. So we'll go through it. You got one and. This takes up two, right? But does it take up only two, that quarter note? No, it has to take up two and. Since it takes up two, has a beat. You have beat three here and or the and of three we call that and then you have four this actually takes a four e technically since that's an eighth note and then you have and a right since you have eighth notes right between there so you'd have four and then the next one would be and so that makes sense and uh that's what we have so here we go you have uh one and two and three and four e, uh, four four e and a. i obviously need to practice that again so some of these uh 
you'll obviously have to go through again and again. One and two and three and four E and a. One and two and three and four E and a. So just like that. I got it that time. Okay, so that is our last example we're going to do for today uh, since, you know, we're winding down for the day. And uh, I just want to take any last minute questions or uh, anything from the uh, audience or the, uh, the students rather. And uh, I just want to say if, you, if this is your first time attending the live stream, uh, as you may have heard me say a bunch of times, I do like to say it since people know, uh, Fridays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You want to check though lessonsontheweb.com slash community uh, and scroll down the page to see the official calendar. Uh, just in case I have to cancel for some reason or uh, that I decided to cancel ahead of time, just so you know. But in general, Fridays and Sundays, 8 p.m. And we're actually meeting this next Friday, uh, 8 p.m. So, you know, stay tuned if you're around on Friday. Feel free to check it out. And if you're around next Sunday, uh, feel free to check it out as well. I always love uh, new faces and returning ones as well. I guess not faces. I guess I don't even know anybody's face, but uh, you know mine. And uh, but, but you know what I mean. It's great to see uh, names come up again and again and know that I can uh, help explain things to you uh, in this uh, live format. So Rich asks, what is the best or worst moment of my piano career? There's, um, uh, wow. The best? It's hard to say what the best is because it kind of builds on itself. Like you teach students and then they learn and then they come back and show you things that they've been able to do with what they learn. And that's really rewarding. So that's like a cumulative thing. Like as you teach, you know, many students over period of years, you know, you can you can come back and see what they've been able to do, you know, after you've started teaching them for a while. Um, and it's especially rewarding if they go and learn something on their own and then, you know, ask me during the lesson, oh, can we spend a few minutes, you know, going over this thing I learned on my own? And the answer is always, a, of course, uh, we can spend a lot of time on that. 